All right, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to extend our existing double linked, double linked list, and we're going to extend it to add a, a double ended iterator to it. Um, so this should be a pretty pretty quick video. Uh, so let's look at this trait, the double ended iterator. It's uh, basically just an iterator able to yield elements from both ends. So if you're not familiar with what an iterator is, right? So let's look at that. Um, found yourself with a collection of some kind, you need to perform some kind of operational elements of say collection, what you'll run into is this thing called iterators. Iterators are heavily used in idiomatic Rust codes, so it's worth becoming familiar with them. Right, so there, you've got this trait, and it has this next, and a lot of other, um, I should say a lot of other programming languages have the concept of iterators as well, so that's not, that shouldn't be anything new, but in Rust, uh, you've got couple different ways that you can iterate over items. One is called uh, by reference here, right, which has the and it, and t for iter. Um, typically, if you have iter mute, that's going to iterate over a mutable list of t, and then an into iter is going to actually consume those values, so uh, that way you can convert it from one thing to the other. Um, iterators have a lot of, like, functional type code, too, so... Um, let me see here. There's a ton of little methods here, so let's just uh, real quick here. Yeah, so you can kind of chain functions around here, like for instance, if you want to fold, um, you know, you can get a reduce function. So here's a sum of all the elements of an array. You can just do regular for each. A lot of these you'll see are like closures. So uh, that's pretty common. Uh, another common one that I like to use is called filter map. So this is where you can actually map a value uh, from one iteration to actually parse it. And then if it's actually correct or okay in this case, it'll filter those appropriately. So that's kind of nice. Uh, map functions, all that stuff. Uh, another one that I like to use called zip. This allows you to kind of join two iterators together. So a1 iter, zip a2 iter, it'll give you a um, a tu tuple of these two values. Um, another thing to note is, let's go back here. Uh, so this for loop, for instance, this actually expands out into an iterator. So it's just, that's just uh, sugar syntax, basically. So that'll map into an iter into iter functionality here. Um, you can do like and values, you'd expect that just to be a regular iterator, and etc. So, and we're actually going to be implementing a double ended iterator, which just adds some more functionality so that we can iterate from the tail as well as the head. So, let's go back here. Uh, first thing I want to do is actually implement, right? So, we're going to implement our iterator. And we're going to need to have something to actually store the state. So let's do that. All right, so our node pointer, if you remember, this was a type alias uh, to our reference counter and our node uh, previously defined in the last video. If you haven't watched that video, go back and watch it. Um, it'll help make things more, make things a little bit more, yeah, it'll make sense if you do it. <laughs> Let's uh, node two, so we got that. And then we got our list iterator. All right, so let's implement that. Next function. All right, so this is our next. And within an iterator, you need to have uh, what's called an associated type. So it's basically a way so that you don't have to have a generic right here. Um, you can just have it right here. So type item, return self item. Um, so first thing we want to do is grab that current. So we're going to unwrap it because we know that it's not none. And then because this is a ref cell, we do need to borrow it. 
and we're just going to advance it to whatever's next. Okay, so that's all you need for iterator. Let's create a function so that we can actually access it. Uh, that's going to be here. We don't need a mutable version. We just need a immutable reference. And then list iterator. And we'll just clone that. And remember that clone is going to create, uh, it's going to increment that strong count for self.head until the list iterator has uh, been dropped. So let's go here, create a test. Okay. And we'll just copy this. And we'll say cert equal this will be need to be mutable because we are going to call next, which is going to change that current value. We expect that to be none. Okay, so let's check that that's working. All right, so we got ourselves an iterator, 4321. All right, so now let's uh, update this so that we can iterate from the tail as well. Uh, so we are gonna need a different uh, pointer for this because we need to be able to independently advance from the beginning and as well as from the end. Clone the tail, right? And we don't need to do a associated type because that's already defined on the iterator. So we just need that next back function. All right. So same thing we did with the Iterator, just take the current back now. Okay. And then we're going to need to I'll go ahead and make sure that there is a value. So it is a ref cell, so we're going to need to borrow that. Um, but remember, we're actually working with, so then we're going to have to say, uh, current dot prev because we care about what is the previous value and we're going to borrow that value right so if it's none then we don't care we're just going to return current dot value now remember we've already uh, replaced current back with none by calling this dot take so we don't have to worry about doing any anything special right here we are going to need to upgrade that weak pointer uh, to a reference counter so that we can manipulate it. Okay, and then uh, self dot current back brief right. Remember that's a temporary reference, so uh, we don't have to do anything special like cloning or anything. So we'll current value. And that should be it. Cool. So we've upgraded. Actually, we can kind of simplify this even more. Current back equals prep.upgrade. There we go. All right. So we got our double ended. Uh, let's go ahead and make sure that we're. I'm just going to modify this to zip. So when you want to access the double-ended, uh, you can call this uh, reverse function. So it reverses the direction, and it only works on double-ended iterator. So that's kind of nice. And we're just going to save this. All right, so we got i and j. And then what I'm going to do here is 
next back. So we expect that to be one, two, three, four. All right, save that. And there you go. So you got four, one, three, two, two, three, one, four, and then those other tasks passed. All right, so that's pretty much it uh, for double-ended iterator. Short and sweet. Um, it, it was only short because we also had to have already implemented the double link list. Um, so from here, um, probably the next video we're gonna do around this is extending the functionality some more so that we can implement an LRU cache. So more weak pointers to kind of work with, but it should be pretty straightforward now that we have a doubly linked list. Um, yeah, if you haven't, please go ahead and subscribe. Uh, like the video if you can. Uh, it's channel's going great. I appreciate all the new followers and all subscribers. Um, definitely thank you, and I will see you all in the next one.